Welcome to Fun Element Method tutorial. Today we are going to learn about buckling analysis for composite shell. So the goal for this video is to show you how to do linear buckling analysis and how to apply composite shell analysis in Abacus. Here comes the problem statement. The geometry we are going to study today is a cylindrical shell whose radius is 20 inches and the height is 60 inches with a hole of diameter 15 inches in the center of the cylinder. The material of the cylindrical shell is a 10-ply composite plate and the ply stacking sequences 0, 90, 30, minus 30, and 45 degrees, and is symmetric. Each ply have a thickness of 6E minus 3 inches. And the material property is assigned here with Young's modulus 15, 15, 5 for 1, 2, 3 direction, and Everything of Young's modulus and shear modulus is in mega PSI. So X and Y for the woven composite ply, X and Y is the in-plane direction and Z is out of plane direction. And the unit set we are going to use in Abacus is palms, inches, and PSI. Here comes the boundary conditions and the applied load. So the bottom surface we are going to fix, consider as a fixed rigid body. And the top boundary condition is the limited boundary condition. So for example, for the compression, since the top surface is going to move downward, we are going to fix all other uh, degrees of freedom and for this one since the top surface is rotating we are going to fix all the all other de uh, degrees of freedom in except the horizontal rotating one now let's go through the abacus GUI settings see how do we actually apply the analysis in abacus Create a part, let's call it a composite shell. Since the thickness of the shell is way smaller than the other direction, we can actually use the shell element to represent that. And it should be come from extrusion and the approximate size is the radius multiplied by two, which is 40, so 50 is enough to show. Now you have zero, zero for the draw the circle of representing your radius. And as your radius is 20, then we write 20, zero. Now you can have your cylinder, cross section of the cylinder. Hit down and then the depth for that should be 60 inches. And here is your cylindrical shell, Z positive, X positive, and Y positive. Now we want to draw the hole here in the X direction. To apply that, we first need to find a plane that can draw the sketch. And then from the sketch, we can extrude the, uh, imagine a cylinder cut through this, our cylindrical shell so that you will you can get the hole there so to do that we first need uh, to create a data plane here since our hole should be pointing in x direction so we can use the yz plane directly and the original yz plane is passing through the center of the cylinder like this and we are going to move it have an offset all the way outside the cylinder. So it must be a number larger than the radius. Let's put 25 here. Now you can see the plane. 
we are going to draw a circle on this plane. So use this one to, this is the create cut from extrusion. Select the uh, plane we are going to draw the sketch. It's a little bit hard to select. And then we are going to appear, see on the top view. So choose the right side of that. Sorry. And then we create the circle for that, zero, zero. And then since the hole has a 15 inches in diameter, the radius should be 7.5. Let's do 7.5, zero. Let's give you the hole. And then now you can see this circle is going to extrude in this direction and will cut down everything on this cylindrical shell. So, but we only want the hole on one side, we don't want on the other side. What we can do is we use the blind and choose the depth exactly the same uh, all the way to the radius, to the diameter of this cylindrical shell, which you can consider there's a solid cylinder with the depth of 25 inches. So the bottom of the cylinders touches the radius of this shell and all the material inside the cylinder will be cut. So with that, you can create this hole here. Now you have your geometry, you need to think about the mesh. Since this is a hole, it may have stress concentration near the hole. And definitely we want a finer mesh for this one. But besides, we also want something that is somewhat reasonable to draw other than the hole. So we want it to be rectangular element. What we are going to do here is we can use the partition surface button and use the face, use the sketch. And then again, we select the surface and we enter a value for that. Similarly, you can consider there's a geometry that passes through this from this uh, datum plane all the way go inside the cylinder. And we don't want it to cut through anything on the other side of the cylinder. So what we want to enter here should be always 25, which, and then to show that we can choose this age. Now we do the partition. To do the partition, roughly think about what we are going to uh, partition here. First, we want it to be as rectangle as possible. So probably we can draw a line here. This line is going to pass through the cylinder. So it doesn't need necessarily to find, form a close geometry. You just need to draw a line here and and you'll be good. Draw another line here to make the geometry symmetric. Now this cylinder is going to be partitioned by this two line. Uh, then we can draw another two line to kind of uh, make the circle, like uh, isolate the circle from the rest of the geometry. Now the circle area, the area around the circle is isolated from the rest of the geometry. It will be easier for us to draw, draw the map, draw the mesh. Besides, think about uh, all things on this rectangle should be a little bit coarse to make your calculation faster. While the point near the circle is a little bit fine. To have a transition region, it will be better if you can draw another circle that, that is in the middle of this area. So uh, for that, we can use the dimension tools and then enter a reasonable value, for example, 11. And click done. Now you can see your the surface is partitioned by all the line we just draw. And later it will be better for us to assign the 
assign the different size of meshing for different surface. Now we can go to assembly, uh, create, uh, uh, sorry, uh, definitely we haven't go to assembly yet. We need to do the material property first. So to do that, let's call it CFRP. And since this is general anisotropic case, we use elasticity and then choose engineering constant for that. And just enter whatever we have, 15, 15, five. But remember it's mega PSI, so it should be 15 E6, 15 E6, and then 5 E6. 0 0.05, 1, 5, and 1, 5. 0 0.05, 0 0.15, and 0.15. Here is 1.2, 1, and 1. 1.2, remember it's E6, 1E6, and 1E6. Click OK. Now we can do the section. Definitely you can use the composite layer manager, but I would like to use the section tools here. So let's call it CFRP set. So definitely we need to select shell element and choose composite. And here is all your layout. We can add up to up to five of that. And material, all of that should be your CFRP. Integration method, uh, we use the Simpson and three millimeters, uh, sorry, three intersect, uh, integration points through the thickness direction. And the thickness, all of that has uh, 0 0.006 inches uh, or 60 minus three, 60 minus three, 60 minus three, and oh, sorry, 60 minus three. Orientation angle is something you need to pay attention to. It's 0, 90, 30, minus 30 and 45. 0, 90, 30, minus 30, and 45. And definitely a symmetric layout. So click this, check this box. So once you have the section, you can definitely assign the section for all your materials. And don't need to change anything here. But now one problem you can see here is our default coordinate system Z is pointing up, X, is, X and Y is radial direction. However, since our composite layout always assume X is the tangential direction, Y is, Z is always the out of plane direction. So we need to reassign the material property here. And to reassign that, Think about the coordinate system. We are going to turn our Z into X and our X into Z. So we can create a datum, uh, datum uh, coordinate system here. So let's call it uh, CFRP uh, CSYS. So rectangle coordinate. And the origin, we can just keep it there, zero. Now select the x-axis. Our x-axis is originally is z-axis. So we do 0, 0, 1 here. Select something on the x-y plane, which means originally is y-z plane here. So we do y, we just select y-axis, which is 1, 0, 1, 0. And you can see your coordinate system here. Axis in the longitudinal direction, y is the same as this y, and z is out of plane uh, direction. And by doing that, we can use this one. Select the material, uh, select the region that we are going to assign the coordinate transformation, and then here choose the our uh, our user defined coordinate system.
select the coordinate system we just create, and then your normal direction, as I mentioned here, should be Z direction. So choose axis three. Kind of check your local coordinate here. One, the green one should all pointing in the longitudinal direction. Your yellow one, which is two, is always the hoop direction. And your normal one should be pointing outward. And if it is okay, click okay. And then we can, so everything about property part is done here. Now we can make our instant. I personally prefer using independent. And then before we actually, uh, before we actually uh, do steps interaction and load, we can do mesh first. Cause uh, from the, after we mesh, we can select the node set and later apply the interaction. You can see original setting, everything is red, which means, which means free mesh method. We select those one we put just partition as a rectangle, and we can change it from free to structure, which will make your mesh more uh, reasonable. And in between, you cannot do too much. It just leave it as the uh, leave it as the free. But we can change a free method from advanced fonts to uh, medial axis, which will make it more symmetric. And now we assign the global seed. Here I do zero point two inches. Since our uh, it may be a little bit too fine. Uh, so let's change it to 0 0.4. As long as you can see the circle, I think it's a good assumption for that. Okay. Now the part is, uh, on this two circle, we want to make it finer. So we need to mesh independently on this two circle. Select this circle and apply by number. Original default is 177. We can bump it up to 300. Similarly, for this small circle, we need to assign the same number of elements, 300. So that the, your meshes between this circle and this circle will be very uniform. After everything done, just mesh your part. Now you can see that it is somewhat uniform outside and kind of coarse. Inside is pretty fine, especially near the circle. If you want a better deformation, you can even make the mesh finer near the circle. Now once you have the mesh, we can use tour set to create a node set, which represent your top and bottom surf, top and bottom edge. Because later we are going to apply load and apply the rigid body boundary condition to the top and bottom edge. So top, select node here and change it from feature eight and then select the top. Also, uh, so let's open the manager. So create a bottom node, feature age, and then select this one. Once it's done, the assembly part is okay. Now we can move it to the step, go back to step and create, this is called linear buckling analysis. So, uh, you should choose the linear perturbation and inside that choose the uh, buckle. And this is, you have two eigen solvers. One is the lens offset, the other is the subspace. Sub, subspace is good for uh, a few number of eigenvalues, while lens is good for like 
huge number of values. Since we're not getting that much, we can do a uh, temp here, representing how much eigenvalue, that means how much buckling mode do we want. And to make it stop in the middle, we in input the maximum eigenvalue of interest is 10 here. So this vector is used for per iteration. Normally you can do two times the eigenvalue. And then this number you can bump it up to a thousand, which normally you won't need that much. When it reaches 10, it will automatically stop. So if you get some error, if your model get aborted, you can make it even larger. Once you have the step, now in the interaction, we assign the rigid body boundaries. And to make it simpler, simpler, we can use the reference point to represent that. So this one rep is the re create reference point here and here. And now we can assign the condition. Let's call it top. Oh, let me check, just have a quick check of the, uh, of the set we just create. The top one, see I make a mistake here. The Z axis is pointing up and this actually should be the bottom. So let's name it as bottom. Uh, or just bot. And here, let's remain, rename it as top. Top is at the positive z-axis and bottom is at the uh, negative z-axis. It doesn't matter that much just to keep track of everything. So now we can assign the uh, conditions here. Use rigid body here and then select the, let's name it top edge. And then select a reference point to represent all the points you want and select type here. And then in your set, choose your top and hit OK. You can see the reference point and all the top surface nodes are highlighted. Same things apply for bottom edge. Rigid body, use tie, and the reference point choose the one we just made, and then make selection, use the set we just create. To select the reference point, one way is to put it in the name, so it's easier to select reference point there. Now, with the rigid body and we can apply low. Remember our bottom surface is fixed rigid body. So here we create the bot fixed. It should be in the initial step and choose the first one and then select, we just need to select the reference point. We don't need to select the entire age. And then after that, do fix here and then it will be fixed. And for the top, remember that, let's do, let's say compression. For compression, we only need the degrees of freedom that is vertically, is the vertical degrees of freedom. So we create the top uh, BC and use pre-described displacement here for the top one. And what we need to fix is only uh, U1, U2, and all the rotation. Because U3, which is Z direction, we still need it. And finally, we need to apply the low at your step. Choose the concentrated uh, force and apply here. Uh, So this is a compression. 
which means we only need C3 here. And this should be a minus value because it's compression. And we use one for that, it's a normalized value. So that later when you get the eigenvalue, that will di directly become your critical low. You don't need to multiply, uh, you don't need to divide by this value. Sorry, multiply by this value. And double check the arrow, the little yellow arrow should be pointing downward. Everything looks good. Have a quick data check and material property looks okay. Orientation looks okay. Steps, we have everything. And then mesh looks good. And then boundary condition looks okay. Now we can apply Oh, and also the interaction look okay. Now we can do the job. Create a thing called comp compression. Then submit for analysis. Go back and check your thing. This low one now is compression and later when you do torque, you can just change it to a uh, torsion like this. So let's go back to the job. It's a, always a good thing when you're running something, open your uh, monitor. You can see the warning here. The warning say 11 elements are distorted. And basically it means like the, since our geometry is not, not some regular geometry, it may have some weird element that will not satisfy, like not all the material property of things satisfied can be satisfied in that element. But 11 element compared to all the element we have is uh, quite a few uh, number of element. It doesn't matter that much. If you really don't want it, one way to bypass it is to finer your mesh. And by doing that, I think you get for example, make your global size to 0 0.2 or 0 0.1, probably it will fix a lot. And if you feel like your analysis take too long time, you can always <clears throat> make your mesh coarser or reduce the number of eigenvalues you want to obtain from this analysis. This analysis should be one step analysis. See this step is already coming out. That means it's complete. And since it's just solving an eigenvalue so, uh, solution, hit results and then click this one, you can see how it deformed. Uh, I don't like the mesh here, but so we can use the common edge free. Now you don't have the mesh. So this one, you have 10 step, which represent 10 Eigen mode. So this is your first eigen mode with a load of 21 pounds, uh, 21.7 pumps concentrated load. And then a uh, kilo pumps, sorry. So you can see this mode is more like uh, anti symmetric mode. This is pointing out, this is pointing inward. And it definitely will concentrate near the hole. Uh, and this is your mode two geometry. It's more like a symmetric mode. And keep going on, you will see all the mode shape. Mode shape means when you apply the pressure in this critical load and how does your geometry deform. That is your buckling mode shape. And you can obtain all 10 of that. Now let's go back to the load and added that, uh, let's suppress this load because we are not going to use it now. So create a new load. Let's rename this one as uh, compression. Create a new one called torsion. Apply the moment here. And the moment should be applied on the top and then you can enter a value of zero, zero, 
And this moment is going to be applied like make your top surface rotating horizontally. And by your right hand rule, this should be a Z axis torque, Z axis moment. So let's do one here to represent the normalized force moment, sorry. And later your eigenvalue will directly be your moment. And then we need to change a boundary condition. Don't forget about this step. As the top boundary condition sinks, uh, we are able to rotate, but we, we are not able to move now. So we suppress the U3 and make U, a UR3 as a degrees of freedom. And one, when everything looks good, we can run our job again. Create a new one called torsion. And then we can submit that. And again, we obtain the same warning because we didn't change our mesh and like an element set up. Normally, this analysis will take uh, one to two minutes for 10 mode. It doesn't cost that much time. If it is, if it is cost take you too much time, normally it's because the geometry is too stiff. You can kind of check whether your whole size is large enough or your material property is correct. Uh, if it is too soft, then it will be very fast. If it is too stiff, it will be very slow. <clears throat> and let's just wait. Another thing is, since this is only one step analysis, you cannot really apply the uh, parallel computing in this problem. So meanwhile, we can kind of review that, what did we do for this analysis? First, we create a part, and when assigning the material property, we create our own local coordinate, which follows, which follows the, coordinate system we made, Z is pointing outward and X is along the tangential direction. And then we make orientation of our layup to satisfy our local coordinate system. And then we do partition to the geometry just to make your mesh more reasonable. And then in the step, we choose linear perturbation and then choose buckling analysis. You can select the number of mode you want. It's not necessarily to be 10. It can be any number you want. But if it is a small number, use the subspace. If it is a large number, use the other. And then uh, if you want, you can select some point to give you the field output or history out, uh, field output value for that and then uh, you cause we want a constraint rigid body constraint on the top and bottom because in real buckling test your top and bottom surface is going to be glued to your instrument that's why it need to be considered as a rigid body and then uh, we use a reference point to represent the constraint uh, the rigid body so that we can apply force and boundary condition on those reference point. Boundary condition, we have fixed bottom surface and uh, 
degrees of freedom changing for the top surface. When it is doing compression, your degrees, of, your only degrees allowable degrees of freedom is vertical displacement. And if you're doing torsion, then the only allowable degrees of freedom is the uh, vertical moment or vertical rotation. And uh, then apply load. When you apply load, it's better to assume the value as one. You can also assume that's two or three, but then you need to, when you get the eigen value, that will be something else. You need to multiply that to your, to your applied force. So if it is one, then you don't need to do anything. And finally, apply when you do the job, you cannot use parallel computing for this case. Okay, as is complete, let's see the result. So this is your first mode of torsion. It's still like uh, concentrating near the hole. Second one, but look at this too. It's very close in eigenvalues. Well, one of that is positive, the other of that is negative. It probably means that your torque is applying this direction or the opposite direction. So then is the fourth one, fixed one. Start from the fixed one, fifth one, you can see that the mole shape is not near the hole anymore. It's like uh, distributed in, inside the entire body. And then six, one, seven, seven, eight, nine, and 10. That's everything about mole uh, buckling analysis. What is your critical load and what is your mole shape? And hope that you can learn something from this video. And Thanks for listening to this video and see you next time.